Reynolds back in a hurry. Reynolds to the hole. We're trying to get free shoot scores. To keep the Grand Barry on target. Lundy to the house. Touchdown, Virginia. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K-12. through Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. I really do consider... These guys on, on the team, my brothers. I love for voting for the fat guys, but... You know that they're a powerhouse. They let you run the ball. These guys have been my best friend for five years. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Bart number 62 on the football team. This week we have a special on the Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to take a look at the Virginia and Minnesota matchup. We have a senior send-off special and then the players' picks for the best play of the year. So let's kick off the show with my pick for play of the year. The play of the week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. Best play? Let's go for Nate Lyles. We like, I like the guy, man. He just plays hard, so he deserves he deserves the best play of the year. Right? Yeah, go to Nate Lyles. Hollenbach fakes the inside handoff. In the pocket, throws. Jojo Walker. Oh, he makes the catch at the 36-yard line, but Nate Lyles leveled a hit. Coming up next. I think this is the best team, uh, Minnesota, that we've played in a bowl game so far. Welcome back to the show. As you can see, I'm packed and ready for the bowl game in Nashville, Tennessee against the Golden Gophers. Let's look at the X's and the O's in this special bowl preview. The Virginia Cavaliers meet the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the Music City Bowl on Friday, December 30th at noon Eastern Time in Nashville, Tennessee. Both teams arrive looking to end their years on a positive note after tough finishes to their respective seasons. Minnesota started strong, going 5-1 over the first six games and beating Michigan on the road. However, the Golden Gophers struggled in the last half of the season, losing three of their last five games, including a 52-28 drubbing by Iowa in their final matchup. Year in and year out, we face the same, same type teams, but you know, to be able to play somebody at a different conference, something we've never even seen before, it'd be a really exciting game. I think everybody should be... Uh, really fun to play that game. I can't wait. Going to Nashville, we're going to play Minnesota, a team we've never played before. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be a tough team. And I love playing tough teams, so I'm excited. I can't wait. Minnesota features a potent offensive attack, highlighted by the running back tandem of Lawrence Maroney and Gary Russell, who both gained over 1,000 yards this season. Maroney is a 5'11", 205-pound junior All-American. He churned out over 1,300 yards with a five and a half yard average per carry and 11 touchdowns. While Russell, a 5'11", 195 pound sophomore, added 1,045 yards and scored 19 touchdowns. These talented backs ran behind a veteran offensive line with multiple NFL prospects. The unit is led by All-American center Greg Esslinger widely considered to be the top snapper in the country, and senior guard Mark Setterstrom. While the Gophers are a run-first offense, they keep defenses honest with an accurate and effective quarterback who throws an accurate deep ball. Junior Brian Capito was one of the most improved signal callers in the Big Ten this year, throwing for 1,900 yards with 14 touchdowns and just six interceptions. The Cavalier defense will certainly have their work cut out for them. However, Minnesota has never played against the 3-4. When a team comes in and, and likes to run the ball, uh, and they've never run the ball against the 3-4, I, I love it because 
you know, it's a totally different ball game as far as, you know, blocks and schemes, and I'm sure they haven't seen it before. We know that they're a powerhouse. They like to run the ball, and, uh, you, know, that's, you know, that's what they're known for. I think if we can really do our job as an offensive unit, score points, and execute like we should, then we'll be successful this upcoming game. On defense, Minnesota struggled during much of the season, allowing 408 yards per game and ranking 87th in the country. Minnesota's marquee defensive player is all Big Ten defensive tackle Anthony Montgomery, who the Cavs will have to control in order to run the football. The Golden Gophers gave up 12 and a half yards per catch through the air this season, so look for Marcus Hagens and wideout Dayon Williams' attempt to stretch the field. This game could turn into a high-scoring affair if the Wahoos can keep the Gophers guessing. Ultimately, both teams will strive to keep long possession, to keep their opponent's offense off the field. And the team that can most effectively control the clock will have an advantage. Their uh, offense, I believe, has uh, some really good linemen and uh, a good running back who can keep the ball for a long time. And so their defense, you know, they're, they're a decent defense. And if, if we can go out there and try and put together some of our run game like we've been later in the season, um, I think we'll, we'll have a good time fighting for that time of possession because everyone knows that's such a key factor in a game. I think if we pair up some of this inside run game, some of these uh, cold plays, a lot of the same stuff that you know, Minnesota's doing on offense, you know, we'll have a, a grinder of a game and that's what we like. So I think that's really important. And I think this is the best team, uh, Minnesota, that we've played in a bowl game so far. Uh, they've now won the last three bowl games that they've been in. Uh, they're a terrific offensive team. They're, they're fifth in the country in total offense, second in the country in, in rushing offense. They've got a great back. The Cavaliers are in the unfortunate position of preparing for the game without their offensive and defensive coordinator. However, a trip to Nashville and the Music City Bowl should prove to be positive for the Virginia program. This is a great opportunity to go and play against a Big Ten team. And if we can establish uh, a successful uh, strategy and, and execute, especially with these you know, younger individuals. I think it will build a lot of confidence. I think it will be a great outlook at, at the type of talent that we have coming in uh, at Virginia. We had some great plays this year, but my favorite was the one from EB to Day Day for the long touchdown against Miami. From the 10-yard line on a second down call. Play fake Lundy on the reverse. Emmanuel Byers looking for somebody to throw to. Puts it up wide open. Dayon Williams, the catch, 45, 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Razzle dazzle, touchdown Cavs. For complete Cavalier sports coverage, watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. I watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. When Bart's surfing the web, he goes to www.VirginiaSportsTV.com. If you love Cavalier football, then check out VirginiaSportsTV.com so you can get a better look at me and some of my teammates. For exclusive all-access video of Virginia football, visit VirginiaSports.com and look for the links to VirginiaSportsTV.com. Coming up next... I really do consider these guys on, on the team my brothers. time again, Nashville's holiday tradition, the 8th Annual Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl presented by Bridgestone continues to provide the best in college football action as the Virginia Cavaliers take on the Minnesota Gophers. See the ACC and Big Ten square off as Virginia's dynamic quarterback Marcus Hagens tries to keep pace with Minnesota's Lawrence Maroney and the highest scoring offense in the Big Ten. Join the Cavaliers in Nashville. Order your tickets for the December 30th Music City Bowl. The upcoming Music City Bowl marks the last time that the senior class and myself will be playing together. After four to five years of hard work and friendship, it's sad to see it all end. So we're going to devote the Student Athlete of the Week segment to the graduating class. 
The Student Athlete of the Week is presented by the Virginia Lottery. In 2005, the Virginia Lottery contributed a record $423 million to public schools throughout the Commonwealth. So I've had this opportunity to really play with um, you know, this, this, this senior class, including the, the one that's even ahead of me. The whole time has just been a great experience. Uh, Wally Lundy, uh, Bart, Marcus Hagens. Just to name a few, there's some of the guys that really have impacted my lives, and I, I really just want to thank everybody who's been in that senior class, who's gone through the struggles, and uh, that's been able to come out on top. Those are the guys I, I've, I've fought and, and sweated with, you know, for the past five years, four or five years, you know, through and through, no matter how hard it got, you know, those guys were always there, and, and they're still here, and, um, you know, I love them with all my heart. These guys have been my best friend for five years. You know, it's just, I can't describe how it's going to be to leave these guys because they've been my family for so long. From Brennan, I mean, I've lived with Brennan for three years. We've dressed up together every year for Halloween. I just don't, it's one of those thoughts that I want to keep in touch with these guys. I want to keep in touch with guys like Biscuit and Owe and DeBrick and Bart. I mean, these guys are my true friends. And uh, it's just, I mean, I just want to focus on being friends with them for the rest of my life. Coming to the, this last game, you know, I think it's starting to be a little more sobering that, you know, that's it. We got this last game and we'll never come in these hallways or practice out in these fields again. Marcus may be heading for the first down, 10-5, goal line, touchdown! They are the team. It's hard not to learn from those guys. They've been around a long time. They know a lot. And uh, it's a neat group of guys, too, because you know, they don't just take that and run with it. They're very helpful to, to the younger guys. And, and you just kind of fall in line, and, and they lead by example. And it's very valuable to have them around. You know, it was a great class. I just really enjoyed just all the guys and their their different uh, personalities. Uh, I remember Brick and just some of the silly things he's done and Wally and uh, Mark Miller and just everybody's been just a really fun time here at UVA and, and I'm gonna miss them all after this. Well, that's what's crazy about football is that you know you come in especially college football and you have guys from you know every background, every race, every class and society. I mean you name it you have a weird combination of that person and when you get all those people together for one goal you end up making like you know real meaningful relationships out of those with all the people that are with you because nowhere else would you ever you know meet him and out with, with Marcus like I'd probably never meet him before I'm from Ohio you know from a, a farm area and you know Marcus is from Virginia Beach down the big city area down there and you know, if it was never for Virginia football or the sport, you know, I'd never meet him. But regardless of that, we're good friends. So it's things like that that you miss because I don't think there's other opportunities to meet a lot of diverse people like that and get close. Collectively, they've done so much, really. Uh, they're the group that really kind of helped rise the program. I really do consider these guys on, on the team my brothers, and, and there, there's not anything in the world I wouldn't do for them. I'm here with Dave Gonzalez, one of the many hardworking people on UVA's football staff. Former players and alumni alike helped to support the team and keep the program going. Just recently, Charles McDaniel donated a brand new truck to the equipment staff to help haul our equipment to games both here and away. And that's our feature for the week. Dave, take it away. Who's Heating Up is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Charles McDaniel, uh, president of uh, the Hilda Companies. Played at Virginia from 82 uh, through 86. Had a great experience, football was wonderful. Uh, Virginia continues to be 
a place near and dear to my heart. George Welsh said, it's time for us, if we want to be, if we aspire to be this, this perennial top 15, top 20 program, we need to do some of the things that the top programs do. One of those things just happened to be have a truck for, for the equipment, for the transportation equipment to practices and on away games. A truck wouldn't come to many people's mind unless you're in the trucking business. <laughs> a truck is not exactly what you're thinking. Let's give a truck to the university. It was perfect for me. Hi, I'm Mike Stroud, equipment manager for the Virginia Football Cavaliers. The equipment staff, we have a huge challenge here, uh, getting everything back and forth from the game site. When you've got a Division I program with, with 90 guys going up and down the road, and there's a lot of equipment. The truck they have, have now is a, is a wonderful truck, um, a big upgrade from what they had before. That was cool. I think it's sweet. It's been a huge help this year compared to years in the past when we had a smaller truck with not as many amenities on it. They kind of catered the truck to, to our specifications and made it the size that we needed it. The truck is something that's a, you know, that, that's a billboard that goes all over. This truck is also a great marketing device for the University of Virginia. When we go on the roads, you can see it's decorated with the V-Saber of Virginia football uh, along the sides and on the back. I get a big charge when I see that truck. Not as big as playing, but, but, but yeah, I, I love seeing that. It's a lot of pride in that. I have a lot of respect for the people in the equipment uh, room. Uh, it's, a, it's a thankless job, but, but they're the ones that make it happen every day. And the truck is a small thank you to them and to, to the university and to the football program and the athletic department for what it's done for me. Find out why more people are choosing clean, safe, reliable propane. Visit usepropane.com. Propane, exceptional energy. Mike Johnson's run in Syracuse was awesome for me because that play I was pulling on and lead blocking, and I made that play right at, I mean, I barely made it in time for him to run, so I felt like I had some involvement in that. And that's always a nice, like, satisfying feeling for a lineman when you can help spring a big play like that, so. That, it was a 38, something like that, boss, and Syracuse had a good time with that one. Ottawa Anderson in the slot near side, and a handoff, Michael Johnson, and Johnson slips around to the outside, 35, 40, goodbye, 50, 40, 35, 30, 25, 25, goal line, touchdown, Michael Johnson! I'm Sean Singletary, stay tuned for more highlights on Cavalier Sports Weekly. I want to be amongst the best, I want to continue to compete against the best, but most importantly, I want to beat the best. Reynolds for the three, bucket! So many people ask questions about why, and I always ask questions why not. Unbelievable! You fans, join us for the last ball in U-Haul as we play for the Loyola Greyhound. The lob, oh, and the finish! Play of the year would have to be, um, I would say, Brennan Schmidt's, uh, Interception. You don't get to put his hands on the ball a whole lot, and uh, it was pretty exciting to see him to catch. The, you know, he actually caught the ball. So it was pretty exciting. My vote for play of the year would be when number 96 saw a ball tipped up in the air by Mod Brooks and snatched it out of the air and caused an interception. And uh, it was a pretty big play. You know, I've never seen too many plays like that in my day. So, I got to give it to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> DeSanto out of the shotgun to throw. Third down, that ball batted up in the air, and it's going to be caught and intercepted. Brennan Schmidt, it fell right in his lap. Welcome back to the show. The men's basketball team traveled to Gonzaga Saturday night. Let's take a look at the game action. The Virginia Basketball Game Story is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. 14-17 in the first half. The Bulldogs lead at 9-6. Off the screen. Singletary down the lane. Inside. Floater. Book it. Yeah, he's, he's really quick. He's going to have it present problems for Gonzaga on the defensive end. Dogs back by one. Singletary wants the three. Goes to the right. Boom. Hit it. Uh, Singletary just taking over the game. Singletary wants the answer. Fell down and he hit it. He Singletary is, is just having a great first half. He's got 14. Shot no good. Mikulowski's the rebound. The release. Singletary behind the back. Sean wants the three. 22 feet. Splash. Oh, Singletary. Three threes in the first. 29-24. In the games that we've played with him uh, in the lineup or teams that just flow up and down that we've, we've gotten the ball we may not always got conversions but we've gotten the ball up uh, better than than uh, than people give us credit for 
Reynolds with a crossover. Reynolds trying to split the defense. Elevates jumper. Good. JR took Rabio inside. He's going to have to have the lead back 61 59. Diani's got him. They bring it to Rivo. Rivo spots for the three. Got it. Rivo is fifth three. It came at a great time. And a technical foul on JR Reynolds for arguing the call. It wasn't because he yelled at the ref or taunted him or swore it or anything like that. It was, a, it was a basketball contact technique. Now to Morrison. Morrison gets around Joseph. Inside elevates. Jumper good. He's extremely smart and intelligent. Uh, a player that, that he can draw fouls. And he was more determined at what he was trying to do than we were at stopping him in the late stages of the game. You're playing one of the best teams in the country in their gym coming out of finals and you got to play your behind off in order to give yourself a chance to win and and we didn't do that for the 40 minutes that the game was played why not take a shopping break with the virginia cavalier men's basketball team and buy a basketball holiday family four pack the cavaliers will play loyola december 23rd your holiday family four pack includes four tickets to the game four hot dogs four pepsi drinks and four popcorns Last season, this package sold out in three days. Don't miss your chance. A holiday family four-pack is available for only $50. You can order at virginiasports.com or call 1-800-542-UVA1. My vote for play of the year is Jonathan Stupar's catch in Florida State. I love for vote for the fat guys, but Brennan, I can't give it to you, man. I'm sorry. Stupar had a lot better catch. Could have gave it to Fontel on that catch against Boston College, but we lost the game, so... I got to know that one. So I think the play, the play of the year has to go to Stupar. You know, Florida State game, you know, history right there. I think that really just kind of, we came out with a head of steam there. And Marcus was out there making a play like he always does. And found uh, Stoops in the back of the end zone. And it really just kind of made a, uh, sent a message to Florida State that, you know, we're, we scored first and we're here to play. First and 10, 22 yard line, far side has mark. Higgins rushes out of the pocket. Higgins looks to throw in zone, and it is caught. Far yes. side, touchdown, Virginia. Thanks for watching Cavaliers Sports Weekly. We'll be taking a two week break until January 8th, where we're back on air with plenty of hoops action. Until then, have a happy new year. Go Who's. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K through 12. Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program.